Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Kamenitz, Baltimore County Executive. With me is Chief Jim Johnson, as well as Delegate Charles Sidnor has joined us. Uh, we've got a great police department here in Baltimore County, uh, record low crime rates uh, in the last uh, five-year average. Total crime has dropped 7 percent. Violent crime in the last five-year average has now dropped 28 percent. We have not seen a homicide rate this low per capita since Gerald Ford was president. And all of this despite serving the largest population ever, 834,000 residents. Uh, we also have a particularly good relationship between the uh, police department and the community that we serve. And at times we've been asked, how have we achieved this? Well, we've had a strong focus in public safety about uh, hiring well, training well, and leading well. Uh, we have a very diverse police force in terms of our rank and file as well as our police leadership. Uh, but what we have always tried to emphasize, not only in the police department, but all of general government, is the use of technology to make us better, to enhance uh, our ability to uh, provide services more efficiently and effectively and improve the job that we do. And the police department has been the recipient of many different technology upgrades over the last five years that also share in some of that, those successes. Today we are announcing a policy to implement body cameras for uniform personnel in the Baltimore County Police Department. Uh, we will implement these uh, 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 body cameras uh, in a policy that will be eff effective immediately, uh, that will go through a phase of uh, study uh, in terms of uh, acquisition of the product, uh, the best type of product, uh, uh, the training that's necessary, internal procedures that will be necessary such that we anticipate the first set of officers will be wearing body cameras by July 1 of next year. Uh, those officers will be uh, scattered throughout every precinct in the county and during that following next year uh, uh, through additional study uh, every officer that is, has been deemed appropriate to wear a body camera will be doing so uh, by July 1, starting July 1 of 2017. Uh, this is not a pilot. This is a program that is going to be, in, that is being instituted effective today. Uh, cameras uh, have been a subject of a lot of uh, discussion uh, uh, throughout not only uh, our region, but our state, really across the country for well over a year. Uh, it's a policy issue that we have been considering in great depth since last December when I uh, tasked Judge, uh, uh, Judge, I've already promoted you, Chief Johnson to uh, uh, provide a uh, study of recommendations as to how a body camera program could be implemented. Uh, last December, we did make a decision at that same time to place cameras on taser weapons, and that also offered some uh, insight for us as part of this study phase. And if you uh, remember, a taser is uh, the use of force by a police officer as a last resort before using a firearm. And generally, uh, the victims of uh, uh, or the subjects of tasers are those who. Uh, are, uh, uh, have high emotional difficulties or, or are very high on drugs who are not responding to reasonable requests of a police officer and as a last resort that officer feels the need to tase. We did implement cameras so that when a uh, taser is deployed from the case the camera immediately goes on. We did have some question uh, as to the oral aspect of the use of cameras on tasers and went before the General Assembly to make sure that under the Maryland Wiretap Act those oral communications would be allowed. Delegate Charles Sidnor on behalf of our administration did introduce a bill in the General Assembly that did address that issue and um, uh, Delegate Sidnor thank you for being here but also thank you for your efforts on behalf of Baltimore County. Uh, uh, Delegate Sidnor's bill that we asked him to sponsor was enacted by the General Assembly with some modifications. 
uh, and uh, did form the basis to allow us to proceed with that. At the same time, Delegate Sidnor's bill, as adopted by the General Assembly, allowed the General Assembly to further discuss how body cameras could be, could be implemented statewide. And uh, the commission that was uh, recommended uh, by the General Assembly has just been completed. Uh, their report has been completed by Judge uh, Smolkin. And of course, we anticipate that the General Assembly will be taking up uh, this issue further in uh, the next General Assembly. Uh, that's why we are waiting till July 1 to actually place the body cameras on police officers because not only do we want to deal with our own internal process, we have to make sure that whatever the General Assembly might consider, uh, we, we have now also complied with. I want to tell you, though, that the journey to reach this decision today, uh, uh, I, I have run the full gamut. Uh, of, uh, of thought process on this, uh, initially believing that it made a lot of sense and then starting to look at some of the tactical problems for a police officer in wearing a camera, when does a police officer use it, uh, does a police officer wear a camera when you walk into uh, a crime scene and, and are we photographing that, uh, uh, are you photographing uh, victims of domestic violence? Are you photographing witnesses who don't want to get involved in a case, but the officer may want to talk to them about investigatory? There are a lot of host of issues there. Uh, the biggest factor was not necessarily the physical cost of the camera. The biggest factor fiscally is dealing with the redaction issue and how do we protect certain images that otherwise should not be disclosed. So I want to tell you, uh, in full balance, and I've had conversations obviously with the police chief many, many times on this issue, but also we've had, uh, the chief and I have had conversations with State's Attorney Schellenberger, figuring out the best way we could implement something. Would a dash camera be appropriate? Because if you think about our, our county, we're 610 square miles, we're mobile base. Our police officers are in police cars as opposed to uh, walking a beat, and most of the interactions with the police are based upon that track traffic stop, so to speak. So could a dash camera achieve that purpose? But the more we looked at not only the needs of our police department, but events that are taking place all around the country, uh, and our confidence in the use of technology, not only as a tool to help the police department become better, but in, in general government as a whole, we've come to the conclusion that full body camera wear is the appropriate uh, tool to add to our police officers. Uh, we believe that body cameras for our police officers are going to improve public safety. Uh, they are going to improve the behavior of a police officer and the citizen during every interaction. They are, body cameras are going to reduce complaints of officer misconduct. Body cameras are going to improve prosecution. So I'm a former prosecutor. I know that when you know we would put a police officer on and it was a he said, she said, and we didn't have any independent witness as to what occurred, uh, juries would struggle with that. Well, now that we would have theoretically a film of what occurred, there won't be a trial. It'll be a guilty plea because it's pretty clear what happened. It's captured by the film. So I think that will be an aid in prosecution, and it will actually result in the court system being able to handle more cases more efficiently as a result of that. I also think that part of our success in Baltimore County with the statistics that I uh, mentioned earlier are because we have a good relationship between the police and the community that we serve. But we can't rest on our laurels. We have an obligation to serve a very diverse population here in Baltimore County with the highest and best ability that we can provide in our police officers. I believe that the use of body cameras will improve that relationship even more so between the community and the police department. And more importantly, it will add to the community's confidence in the ability of a police officer to do his or her job. 
So the technology is there. We're going to find the funding to make this happen. And I am confident that this is a positive step forward for our department here in Baltimore County. Now, in terms of the time frame I've indicated to you, uh, effective immediately, I, I have uh, directed the uh, police chief, as well as Rob Stradling, our director of information technology, to begin the process of soliciting uh, different uh, procurement aspects to determine what is the best type of equipment to use. And obviously, uh, you know, as the chief can tell you, you can have a camera on a hat, on a badge, on a belt, on a jacket. You know, there are different ways to do it and they will find the best, uh, the, the, the most efficient and effective uh, camera that's available. Uh, in addition, uh, we will begin the process of developing appropriate standard operating procedures of uh, uh, allowing for officers to have the appropriate discretion as to when the camera goes on. But at the same time, in respect for people's right, an absolute right to obtain information from us. We will be preparing for that day in terms of the hiring of significant personnel that will be dealing with the review and potential redaction of filmed, filming uh, or footage uh, that might be requested by any member of the public. Uh, and, and redaction is not a bad word. It's something we do all the time. Uh, when the public asks for a police report, a written report today, uh, we go through a redaction process to, to black out a victim's name or someone's personal information or something that is very sensitive to an investigation. So that same concept also has to take place with this footage that the public could request copies of. The only difference here is it takes significant hours, staff hours, to achieve that goal. Uh, I've been told that for every one minute of film, it takes five minutes of staff time to complete the redaction process. And I want you to think about redaction, what it could be. It could be uh, blurring out a crime scene. It could be blurring out someone's uh, face who has nothing to do with the particular incident. Uh, it could be blurring out a... Uh, uh, a, a victim uh, who's explaining how a crime was committed upon them that is highly sensitive or personal. Uh, those aren't things that we think are appropriate within the public realm uh, and, and uh, uh, we will be sensitive to those things. But rest assured, our goal in hiring all these additional people, including prosecutors in the state attorney's office who will be involved in disclosure uh, of this footage, uh, is to provide this information to the public upon reasonable request. And that is uh, part of this idea of maintaining a, a, the, and building the confidence between the community that we serve and the police department. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud of the decision that we made. Uh, this is not a pilot. We're implementing this program now. Uh, we've made this decision. Uh, obviously, the county council uh, will be required to approve a contract uh, in which to uh, uh, approve the acquisition of the equipment. Uh, uh, and as part of the annual budget, they will have to approve a dollar amount that is part of the chief's budget. Uh, but we anticipate that the five-year cost will be uh, $7.1 million. That includes the acquisition of the equipment, uh, the, the training aspect, annual maintenance that we need for cameras and replacement costs for cameras over five years, as well as the significant additional personnel that we will require for the review and redaction process in order to comply with Maryland Public Information Act. Uh, we will be asking our General Assembly members to consider aspects of the Maryland Public Information Act to offer some concurrence as to our thought process as to where we think it's appropriate to allow exceptions uh, uh, that uh, are otherwise purient in nature and not appropriate to be released. And again, no, no different than what we already are allowed to do with written police reports or even photographs. Uh, so uh, it's a good day for this department and I'm confident with the use of body cameras it will be even a better day in the, in the uh, years to come. So uh, with that, I'll introduce Police Chief Johnson.
uh, if he has any words, and if not, we'll open it up to some questions. But I'd simply add that, uh, as the county executive stated, uh, we completed our committee work, 128-page report that is available, www.baltimorecountymd.gov backslash police fire news, and you can link on to the 128-page study as well. And we, we've issued that in our release. Yeah. At this point in time, um, as the county executive stated, we'll take any questions uh, that you may have. The Baltimore Sun reported that 15 of the 18 committee members tapped to look into body cameras didn't support the idea. Has that changed over the past couple of months? Uh, the, the report that we are disclosing to you and making available online uh, has recommendations of the committee. That report was issued in April, I believe. It has been, and we have taken, Chief Johnson and I have taken into consideration those viewpoints. Uh, nevertheless, we have reached the conclusion we've reached today. Mr. Senator Executive, the, the FOP has, has called this idea a waste of taxpayer money. They said uh, that they felt the $7.1 million could be better spent. They, they listed off a number of things. They, they talked about unfunded police officer positions, putting more officers on the streets. Uh, they, they even suggested the money go to uh, school air conditioning rather than this dysfunction. Why is this the appropriate way to spend the money? They cite low citizen complaints against the department, 89 total for all of last year which is relatively low considering the number of calls per service and the low use of force rate. What would you say to that? Well, as I indicated before, we are very proud of our Baltimore County Police Department and the, uh, the, the factors that the FOP, the Fraternal Order of Police Union, may offer uh, that says we don't need cameras are all accurate in the sense that things are generally going well in our county. But I frankly believe that's a reactive position. I want us to be in a proactive situation. Just because it did not happen yesterday does not mean it won't happen tomorrow. And I want to make sure that this department is well into the 21st century policing model, making use of all technologies that are available. The most important thing that we have, and I do believe we have that today, is the trust between the police department and the community. But we are not going to allow that to deteriorate in any way, shape, or form. To do nothing would allow that risk. Uh, look, I, I'm the tightest guy around. I pinch every county tax dollar that I can to the penny. I recognize that there might be some other things that we could use this money for, but I am so committed to making sure that our police department continues to move forward and does not create an opportunity to regress that this is a great investment. And again, there are some cost savings that I think will be achieved in prosecution and court time. And, and, and the idea of increased confidence is almost a priceless benefit that I am confident will more than pay for itself. Chief, can you speak uh, to, the, to, to the complaints, how many you've had, and the nature of them, and what the use of force has been like in the department? Historically, we've had very low complaints based upon number of calls we handle per year, nearly 600,000. In addition, uh, we make over 25,000 arrests a year. And we have enjoyed, due to our policies, our training, the people we hire, the people we promote, a low rate of complaint, a low rate of use of force complaints. Despite that, though, Baltimore County has always been on the cutting edge of public safety technology, policy, and procedure. It's the Baltimore County way. My men and women have to accept this as a tool in policing that is here to stay. We manage this agency, and we know what will make our work more effective and efficient, both for the officer and certainly to present a case to the state's attorney to courts. It's more robust with that film in certain situations. I will also point out, though, the art and the science in this tool is crafting policy and procedure, standard operating procedure, that is still allows for officer autonomy, like you reporters want when you do your work. We need to preserve that, but at the same time, there'll be mandated situations that must be filmed. When you started, this was something that 
when you were a young officer, you had no idea. But I would imagine that as you see these things taking place in terms of police-involved shootings around the country, you know, what are some of the things that go through your head and your heart in terms of protecting your officers and doing their jobs? Uh, this, without question, I've given this great thought. It's the most daunting, complex issue I've seen in 38 years of service. There is a place for the camera, but keep in mind, the cameras are one-dimensional. It's not like the Ravens game we're going to watch this Sunday, I suppose the game is, where you have multiple cameras that can look at an incident. It's not the way it is. And with movement of the body and certainly noise uh, that occurs in the outdoors, it's not a panacea, but it is an excellent tool to help create transparency and once again show that we are performing our duty in a lawful, proper way. You know, you, you, even though it's transparent, and you, you do think it's only going to show one angle, it's still open to interpretation. It is. And I, I just want to keep in mind, keep uh, the listener in mind as well. What's important is what the officer perceives at that blink of an eye, that crisis moment. That's what you also want. This tool will also add to understanding the situation. But it's what you perceive at that second that causes you to take action. The tool will be helpful and also prepare us for court presentation and certainly prosecution. And, and also, it's, uh, Lisa, it's, uh, it, it's a good tool for training to improve officers' techniques. So it doesn't mean that an officer did something inappropriate, but an officer and a supervisor can review, hey, maybe next time you want to consider it this way. Or, by the way, you exited the vehicle in an unsafe manner for yourself, and maybe that's something to look at. But I want you to think about new ideas, and this is clearly a new idea. If, if we stuck to what we had that's working well, we wouldn't have put internet in our, in our police cars. If we stuck to wor working what was working well, we wouldn't have done field-based reporting. If we stuck to what's working well, we wouldn't have added DNA uh, a compilation in our, in our uh, forensics department where we've tripled the amount of money that we're putting toward that. There are always new technologies that we shouldn't fear, we should embrace. And that's the way we are viewing this as that opportunity. Now, what's the current view from officers that are walking the beat? Have you heard any feedback from, you know, regular patrolmen? Uh, first of all, I'll talk nationally. When you take a look at the issue nationally for agencies that use them, you get a uh, varying opinion. There are many officers that embrace and certainly wouldn't work without the unit. There are others that are very skeptical about the device. They're concerned about the policies we'll put in place, we'll put in place. But my FOP works with us in developing policies. They sat on this committee. And we'll continue to do that. And we've, we've, we've heard their opinions as voice in the report, as well as uh, whatever other conversations uh, the chief has had with the rank and file. We've taken into consideration those viewpoints. But as the leaders, we have to make the broader decision. Um, th this issue requires a lot of thought in the standard operating procedure. The type of equipment you buy, the vendors you choose to use, working it through our council eventually, waiting for the governor's uh, report, waiting for the Correctional Training Commission report, certainly waiting for the legislature to look at the issue as well. So you can see how daunting this topic is when you begin to break it down. And that is, what is leading toward this very methodical, uh, structured movement uh, toward implementation of the tool. And, and also hiring the personnel that we will need to respond to requests, as well as uh, hiring people to do the training. So when you put that camera on that police officer, all of those things have already been in place before them. And uh, I forgot who asked about uh, police officers. Uh, uh, Derek, you did. Uh, we're actually going to be, we anticipate hiring additional uh, police officers as part of that personnel. Chief, I had a follow-up question, just to make sure I'm clear on something. When you talk about the camera showing the unique vantage point of your officer, does that play into the fact that everyone has cell phones now and so often we, we see images captured of incidents, not by the police, but by, and maybe they're selective, 
you know, in the way that they started and stopped or, or what edits you see. Is that part of this? Because I don't want to read something into this that's not there. But We're, we're they, focused on the use of the camera on the officer, whether it's on the glasses, whether it's on the shoulder, whether it's on the chest. Each one offers an advantage and disadvantages. It also will change our practice and policy and procedures of how we uh, maneuver throughout the day. And in fact, so much so that I see this as a multi-day training program, also adding to your question about why the time. It's not something you just give someone and in an hour expect them to use it. There's a downloading procedure that must be conducted each and every day uh, and other uh, elements that have to be uh, practiced and put in place. And who would be the gatekeeper to make sure that, I, I mean, everyone can have access. Um, you probably have to turn it over so. and can't save that stuff forever. It can be uh, edited. I'm sure those are all the The, the uh, actually, uh, Judge Smalkin's commission issued, at least to the commission members, uh, uh, their findings in which Delegate Sidnor also participated. And one of the uh, helpful comments that was in there uh, uh, wanted the General Assembly to clarify, and we will now be following that before they even act under our premise, that uh, the retention of the, of the footage, first of all, will likely be cloud-based, but that it will be stored in an unaltered fashion, but will have the opportunity to also maintain a log of anyone who views it and then any subsequent versions that might have been utilized afterwards. So uh, you, you always have that basically chain of custody that goes back from the moment it was otherwise filmed. Also, uh, to think about uh, this is really just another tool in the toolbox it's not a panacea. It's not to substitute a police officer's judgment, or it's not to override what the thought process of a police officer was. It's, as you have indicated, it, it, it's a reflection of that particular moment from that particular perspective. That's the way we are looking at it. Well, you need to make cuts to find a funding source. You mentioned that we're going to find the funding. So a funding source has not been identified yet? And if so, does that mean you'll need to cut elsewhere? Well, uh, the, the beauty about our county is that we're fiscally responsible and we anticipate needs well ahead of a moment. So it may mean that something we wanted to do tomorrow may not get done until next week. It, do, it just shows the priority of how we're expending money. But I will tell you that in terms of budget making, our top priorities in this county have been consistent. It is public education, it is public safety, and reinvesting in our aging infrastructure. We've been consistent with that message for the past five years. The bulk of all of our money goes to those three areas, and that's where uh, we believe it is appropriate to do so, and uh, we will have the money in place. Any other questions? Do you know how many personnel you're going to have to add to the program? Personnel? Yes. Uh, you mean the uh, support personnel? Just any position that would be related to the program? There's 21 personnel that will be hired for this particular program. And that would include civilian, police, and prosecutor. Okay. Oh, will school resource officers be required to wear them? It, it's certainly a, uh, a policy consideration. The chief and I have had some conversations on that. Uh, 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 we suspect that that is probably not, uh, the filming of minors is, is not something that we probably want to do on a regular basis. So I'm going to leave that up to the police uh, chief uh, to include as he fleshes out his policy. But my inclination is that that is probably not necessary. How many officers total in the county? 1,400. 1,900. Yeah. Uh, 1,900. Total, yeah. total officers in the county over 1,900. And it would be 1,450 units in the county. Keep in mind that many are detectives, plain clothes, and do vice narcotic work and such. And would, would you be required to enter into a bargaining with the police union for any of the, the policy implementation, or can you just write the policy unilaterally? That's not our style and our approach to management in this agency. As I stated, we will sit with the FOP 
and work out uh, a win-win solution. Uh, certainly, uh, we uh, value their input. Uh, they may claim uh, a term and condition, but we will work through this uh, issue. Thank you, everybody.